Bank Park in Hamilton, and Trust Bank Park is one of New Zealand's most charming cricket grounds, a ground which is ringed by beautiful green hedges and trees, but where that new pavilion was opened only a year ago, the ground is very close to the central business district of Hamilton City and a good-sized crowd in to watch the New Zealand team in action today. Now this town, Hamilton, has two games in the Benson and Hedges World Cup, but it's the only time that the New Zealand team actually makes an appearance here. And the newspaper billboard reflects the incredible interest in the city in the appearance of the New Zealand side. Hamilton provided the 64th venue in the world to host a test match last year, and this most picturesque city is in full bloom with plenty of other things to do while you're in town for the cricket. The ducks on Hamilton Lake seem very content. It might be a town where cricket is the centre of attention today, but the economy of the place is based on agriculture, on dairy farming and on thoroughbred stud farms. And those horses seem very content at places like Matamata and Cambridge, which are very close to Hamilton City. What's it like, do you think, for today? Well, I think it looks pretty good. It looks uh, like very much a batting paradise, very little uh, greenness about it, in fact, none whatsoever. A bit of bareness. Uh, but, but still move a wee bit, does it, yeah. that suggests that it might not be quite as bouncy, but the pace has been very good over the last few games. Well it has, uh, and we noticed with some early practice here uh, on the strip that they used for that Wellington ND game, the ball had some real carry. So I'm expecting a reasonably quickish pitch, but I think it might slow down as the day wears on, because there's not much grass, not much holding here. Lara Vinda de Silva. The final preparation for the match can be made. That's for the patrons yes. who are around the way of rock. As soon as the toss has been made, yes. please leave the oval Maybe. and make your way to your seats. So the final preparation... Pro, this is becoming a habit, winning the toss. Yeah, it's Thank good. Uh, we're going to bowl on this one, Grant. Why is that? Uh, just a gut feeling. I'm not, um, I'm not absolutely certain of what the pitch is going to do, but uh, we'll bowl and see what happens. OK, any changes from Saturday? Uh, Danny Morrison's in and Chris Keynes is 12th man. OK, all the best. Thank you. Aravinda, you're going to bat first. Would you have done that if you won the toss anyway? Uh, actually, it was a hard decision. And uh, in fact, uh, I think it, it was a good toss to lose. ...then in Wellington, and we can tell you that it's a, a cloudy morning, but very cold with a strong northerly wind blowing. And this is a view of New Zealand's capital city, Wellington. Magnificent sight. ...and cam up on Mount Victoria. The game is to be played at the home of cricket in the capital. This is the Basin Reserve, a ground which is very famous in New Zealand cricket history. And we expect a crowd of around about six or 7,000 today. Well, the pitch looks to be a very good one. The, the groundsman here is Wes Armstrong, who has a very good reputation for producing it. Um, no, no, no greenness at all to speak of. So no sideways movement, good flat uh, surface and reasonably firm. Yeah, but there's quite a bit of grass there. The grass, as you say, is, isn't got any uh, life in it. There's no real no. green freshness there. But there is some grass which should, un I think, encourage the pace of the ball, the carry of the ball. Yeah. I think there'll be some quite good carry on this. That we haven't seen too many wickets that carry that well, apart from Lancaster Park. And I think this is one of the better ones at the basin in recent times. Now this is the downwind end, this is the end at the southern end of the pitch, and so that the bowlers bowling from that end should get a f of pace, shouldn't they? Alan Donald particularly. Nice little northerly uh, coming from behind you. <laughs> He's pretty quick at the best of times. Now how are the guys going up and and they had to go. Well that always puts uh, players to the test You come to Wellington uh, and talk about playing bowling into the wind. It's a new uh, dimension here. But the, I think that might favour the South Africans a little better. They're probably stronger characters in terms of that. They're very strong. I know that they're a little bit uneasy about the nature of the pitch after their difficult experience up at Eden Park. But one of the things that of course the, the Sri Lankans have is that they have played here before and they've played into a howling northerly. Well, yes, I don't know whether that helps you or not, but uh, it, it's difficult for the South Africans because it's new territory for them, and I know they are concerned. They want more pace. I think they'll get a little more out of this. Well, Wes Armstrong this morning said that he was happy with the way the pitch had come up, that it looks as if it's going to be a fast one. It looks as if it's... by, um, it, by Eden Park standards anyway, and certainly by the Basin standards, and it looks as if it should be even throughout for both innings. A concrete dry for postal power. It's easy to pay. Aravinda, you've won the toss. What have you decided to do? Uh, have a ball. Yeah. Any particular reason for that? Uh, I thought if at all the wicket uh, will do something, it will do in the morning. And I think uh, we would prefer to chase. Ground. Okay, and you personally would have fond memories of this ground, I bet. <laughs> that was one year back, long years back, really. <laughs> okay, good luck with the map. Thanks very much. Kepler Vessels, you're batting first. Happy with that? Uh, I was going to bowl first, uh, probably for the same reason that Aravinda was, because Sri Lanka is an unknown quantity for us, and we, we would have liked to have tried to restrict them, and then, um, you know, chase from there, but so be it. Okay, now this pitch, does it look better than Eden Park, do you think? 
Well, it's difficult to say, but it does look a little bit, and uh, we have to make the best of it. Okay, and you made a couple of changes for this match. We have. We made a couple of changes plus a couple of technical switches, so um, hopefully that'll work. Okay, all the best. Ta. Well, John, I didn't give us any show at all of playing today, but the rain stopped briefly, they rolled back the covers, and here we are. Yes, I think the ground staff have done very well, because the, the big thing is they've kept it dry, and they've kept the surrounds very dry in unbelievably difficult conditions. Yeah, because the upfield really looked quite wet. There was some water lying around just over there, just off the main block, and I thought it was going to be so wet that they'd never get a start, really, but they have, and the pitch really has been very well protected, so the covers have done their job. And it's the same pitch that was used for the New Zealand-Sri Lanka game, and it looks very similar probably been bought up a little bit with a, a bit of extra moisture and because of the moisture it just feels a little damper but having said that I think it'll play pretty well. Well don't be uh, disappointed by the fact that there's no grass there because in fact there was no grass here last time either <laughs> and it really played pretty well last time. I, I think John that they've got this a bit moister than last time mm. and I was talking to the ground staff earlier in the morning and they said well they deliberately did that because they thought that the previous pitch was a little dry the ball didn't come on quite so much so they're expecting that it will be a bit quicker. Yes. I don't imagine it'll have real pace in it. It, it. it wouldn't have without the grass and that holding thing uh, business. But I think that it'll play pretty well and uh, it'll be pretty fair for both sides. So it was good last time and we're looking for a very good pitch for this game that's a brief. Thanks. 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 Well, gentlemen, it's amazing we're playing at all. Uh, Mohammed, you've won the toss and decided to. Yeah, because uh, the weather has not been very kind all these days. And uh, I think it's a good idea to bat first. You never know what's going to happen later on when it looks still overcast. But uh, I hope uh, it's robbed off a very good game. But uh, I'm sure this 32 hours will provide a lot of entertainment to the crowd here. OK, and a, an important game for you too, isn't it? Yeah, it's very, very important for us, yes. OK, thank you very much. All the best. Thank you. And David Houghton, uh, you guys are always keen to play cricket, aren't you? <laughs> we are, but uh, prefer to play 50 hours. But uh, anyway, yeah, we are playing 32. And at least it's long enough to get a reasonable game out of it. Now, if you'd won the toss, what would you have done? I would have batted first. Um, I'm not quite certain of these rules. You know, the last time we bet, we batted second, we thought we were on the right wicket, and we ended up having to chase about ten and over. So, I would have had a crack first at this, I think. Okay, they do get a bit confusing these rules, don't they? <laughs> they do for us. Okay, all the best. Thanks. And I'm sure that Azradeen and the Indian side are very frustrated and disappointed with that decision. But at the end of the day, you can, cricket is a, a fine game. It's not a wet game, and. Of course, if they play on, then really it makes uh, or puts Zimbabwe into a situation whereby uh, they're at a complete disadvantage. I think they might go back, Richard, because well, it's not as bad now as it was when they talked about it between overs. No, uh, and that's probably a fair enough decision too. So this is what's happening out here. The weather, uh, very inconsistent, and they're going to continue. Much to the delight of the crowd, particularly the Indian contingent that's here today. Well, that must be a huge relief to Ezra Din. The ground staff are ready but they're back into the hutch with the covers for the moment and it's exactly right too because if they had come off their chances of getting back out would be very slight with the way the weather's been however i tell um, you what it's absolutely pouring here and i think they're going to leave the field they are but after after 19 overs they needed to be 158 if they don't come out again they needed to have got through to 158 which were the nine uh, after 19 overs they were the best 19 should i say that uh, india put together and so they're certainly well short of that. Well, it's a torrential rain coming down now. It really is. The skies have opened up. And this has been threatening all afternoon, really. And it's finally happened. And they're going to rush the covers on. But my word, there be, could be some damage done in the meantime. Because absolutely pouring. Just look at that. ...and Zimbabwe. And unfortunately, it's going to be a reduced overs affair today. They call this the Sunny Hawks Bay. It's anything but a sunny day in the bay today. And David Hatton, uh, you won the toss. What have you decided to do? Um, go back to the change and wait till it uh, warms up a bit. <laughs> a bit cold, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, they're going to bat. We'll have a bowl first. OK, what do you think of the pitch? Looks pretty good. I'm not too sure how it's going to play though. You know, just looking at it last night, it looked a little bit up and down. It sort of reasonable pace, but it's going to be two bounces. Okay, and the boys confident going into this game? Very much so. Jolly good, all the best. Thanks very Cheers. much. Cheers, Craig. Thanks, Dave. Good luck. Martin Crow, you're going to have a bat. Happy with that? Well, it's a bit overcast, but it uh, looks a pretty good wicket. Now, New Zealand always does well here, don't they? 
I don't know if we've won or lost all our games, but uh, we certainly enjoy coming to Napier and uh, we hope for a big crowd and, and perhaps the sun comes out as well. OK, and the players not playing today? Willie Watson uh, is resting uh, and John Wright and Murphy sit. Now, Andrew Jones has come out and the players are going to go off. He only just got there and the players are rushing from the field. Umpires Carl Liebenberg and Julius Bilchins have said that it's too wet to continue. And so this is really bad luck for New Zealand and for Zimbabwe. Whoops, well, there he goes. Anyway. <laughs> well, he's gone for a few. <laughs> now, the right thing on the game, though, isn't it? He's well, got a sense of humour, Peter, hasn't he? <laughs> well, you have to have, don't you? But like the Mike Gatting delivery of a few years ago when he <laughs> came out to New Zealand in 78, but just losing all his poise and slipping there. Oh, that back foot, look at that. Down you go, that's dangerous. Well, actually, he turned right over on it. He, he didn't put his sole down at all. He almost turned completely over and put the side of his foot down on the ground. Well, we see the funny side of it here. He probably does a pain. <laughs> oh, there he goes again. Now, this is not funny anymore. Not for Butcher. <laughs> well, maybe it is. <laughs> well, I don't think those studs uh, are long enough for those conditions out there, really. And, of course, they're going to gather a little bit of grass clipping as well, which is going to sort of, uh, you know, make it harder for the studs to get gripping into the uh, into the pitch condition. But, oh, dear, dear. Well, two out of three. <laughs> Ain't bad. Full toss. Crow gets it square. Brandis is going to be in work again. Oh, he misses it. The outfield did him completely. Well, brilliant two balls ago. Makes a mockery of it the next. Well, Changing fortunes, isn't it? But he's a big man. <laughs> there have to be a fair bit of pull up there. And when he tried to slow down, it was just bad luck ball. A little bit of poise lost there. Welcome to the highlights of the first of the World Cup matches in 1992. The fifth World Cup to be played and this opening game between Australia and New Zealand at Eden Park, Auckland. A lovely ground, slightly odd shape, but uh, it looked, according to Tony Gregg, to be in superb condition with a fast outfield and a pitch a little bit damp, could be a bit too paced and uh, might be difficult on which to chase runs. Martin Crowe, the New Zealand captain, won the toss and decided to bat. These are the, the last two balls. He's on 99, wars the bowler. And he's got it away. That's a hundred for Ken, that's a hundred for Crow, and they're off to the ground, oh no! They're invading the ground, Crow wants nothing to do with it. I can't believe this. They're spoiling what so far has been a magnificent occasion. The Kiwis can't help themselves, they're charging out onto the ground. And one feels sorry for those in the West Stand, not one of them have come onto the field. But what an innings, Greg Chappell. Magnificent innings, Tony, and a very fitting century here for Martin Crow. He's had a very dis... And that's going to be the first boundary of the morning. That was a good shot. He didn't have too much room, but hampered by this no chance for the fielders, four runs. Well, that's the first drive of the day that's really pierced the cover field, certainly off the front foot. There has... Loud appeal, and hang on, Mr. Reporter says wait, and he says out. Just checking that the ball carried and umpire Shepherd at square leg. Boys, so look at it. Yes, it, what a good one. It, 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 the angle of delivery brought it in towards the off stump, then it straightened, didn't it? it? Rather more than held its own on pitching, just went away, caught the edge of the bat, Smith took it low down, and quite properly, uh, Mr. Reporter, the umpire at that end, looked. Field and Ken Rutherford, the sweeper way out there, he can't get round to it, and Mr. Reporter. For the third weekend in succession, the unbeaten New Zealand cricket team is on show at Eden Park in Auckland for their fifth match in the 1992 World Cup. It's a fine and humid day, and this pitch for this game against the West Indies is being used for the first time in the World Cup competition. The forecast for today is for some showers during the day, so I wonder if that's going to affect the thinking of the captain who wins the toss. Let's go out to the middle for the toss now. Richie Richardson of the West Indies, Martin Crow of New Zealand, and they're out there with Keith Quinn. We're going to bowl. Um... See if we can get them out early. What do you think of the conditions here this morning? Remarkable transformation. Yeah, right? fantastic. I, uh, I I expected a delay, but uh, they got everything right, and um, looks as though it's going to be a reasonable day. Okay, Martin, your team's been more or less published. Can you confirm for us that uh, the three guys who are not playing? John Wright, Chris Cairns, and Murphy Sir. Okay, Martin, thank you. Thank Play you, well. Keith. Thanks. Thanks. Richie Richardson, would you, would you like mean? to win that one? Well, if I'd won, I think I would have batted. So, 
It's worked out pretty well. Yeah, matter really. Um, I think uh, the wicket looks good. Uh, uh, but the outfield is pretty wet to me, and uh, I believe you know bow bowling with a wet ball would be quite difficult. So, you know, I would have. It's not nice and humid here today. Is it a bit more, more like conditions at home? Well, um, well, uh, this, yeah. The sun is shining. The skies are blue, and um, that's what it's normally like. But apart from the green outfield, I mean, it's you know, very much like home here. Yeah. Okay, Richie, who's uh, not playing in your team today? Um, Simmons, uh, Patterson, and uh, Harper. Uh, so comedy of errors there. Mushtaq, the ball has been hit on the head now by the ball being thrown in. It's a real comedy of errors here. The first comedy of errors that he wasn't watching. Yes, the ball was just underarm to him, actually. It wasn't thrown all that hard. It was just underarm to him. But it hit him smack on the forehead. It gave him the shock of his life. <laughs> it's bad enough having to bowl. The ball hit way down towards... it off and uh, it's given him a bit of a headache he's decided that's enough for one day I'm going inside so about a length here and you can see that it's it's very very hard indeed but I'm sure that you've noticed the grass John well I have I'm, I must say I'm a little surprised uh, Peter I, when I came out here and I saw the pretty lush juicy green grass sure you're right there's a reasonable base it sounds pretty solid it does a little more solid than some of the other ones we've seen and of course there's been so much discussion about the slow wickets and I think this will have some carry on. It mightn't bounce dramatically, but goodness me, some of those early batsmen might be a little nervous about this. Well, I'm sure they will. I was talking to some of them yesterday and some of the bowlers who were looking at it very enthusiastically and the batsmen were saying, corrupt. It, it seems that it's a soft leaf in the grass and it doesn't really deviate the ball sideways as much as one might expect. Mm. Richie Richardson, you won the toss. Uh, what's your decision on this one? Well, morning? I think in these conditions, uh, we're going to have a ball. Uh, I think the wicket looked uh, have a bit of moisture in it, and uh, with overcast conditions, I think uh, it would favour our seamers a little bit. OK, what's the uh, lineup of your team today? Who's not playing? Um, Patrick Patterson, Roger Harper, and um, Simmons. Uh, OK, and you've had a look at the South Africans on television. What do you think of them? Well, they're a very enthusiastic team. They, you know, they're very keen, and you can't really take them lightly. OK, Richie, good luck. Thanks Thank very you. much. Thank, Thank you. you. Kepler Vessels, uh, is that uh, something you would have done? Um, you probably would have liked to have bowled at them. Oh, definitely. I think the first 10 overs or first 15 overs, the ball move around a lot. So um, one left to play well to get through that and then ball the city of Wellington. We can reveal a lovely fine day. That's the overseas terminal in the foreground, Lambton Harbour and the central business district. A marvellous sight indeed on this Sunday morning. There's the Carillion, a war memorial which is adjacent to and overlooking the Basin Reserve. And the pitch here is the same one as was used just a couple of days ago for the match between India and the West Indies. By world standards, it's going to be a little bit low and slow. It may offer the spinners some assistance later in the match as well, but it should. Martin Crowley, Crowley won the toss and you're going to have a bowl. Yeah. Why is that? Um, we've just uh, we've chased quite well and uh, I just think we'd like to get our, our side out here as, uh, as a unit, field well and do the job. Okay, marvellous atmosphere too. It should be great, huh? Yeah. Tremendous. Okay, okay, all the best. Alex Stewart, I suppose the question we have to ask you is, uh, you're going at a bat first, but have you got 11 fit players? At the moment, yeah, but anything can happen. But no, we're starting off with 11, no Gooch, no Fairbrother and no Tufnell. Okay, quite happy to bat first? Yeah, more than happy. That's what we'd have done if we'd won the toss. Okay, cheers, all the best. Thanks, Richie. Well, the wind's really blowing out here in the centre at Bell Reeve. I can tell you that on this uh, wicket, normally over the years, sides have averaged about 200 batting first. Now, Pakistan playing against Zimbabwe here earlier this season made 250, and that's the sort of score the Aussies will be looking for, perhaps even more than that. Just having a look at the pitch, I've had a chat to the groundsman out here. Peter Stowe says that he's pretty happy with it. It's quite dry, a little drier than the last one, although in keeping with what we normally find out here at Bell Reeve, it's a little patchy in terms of what it looks like, but that really doesn't matter. You can see what I mean there, a little bit of grass and uh, a bit of green by comparison to that brown. That all uh, is just a little bit damper, but there's a crack right there. This here, on the other hand, is quite hard. So there may be just a little bit of inconsistent bounce, but other than that, I should think the ball will come onto the bat quite quickly. And uh, of course, it's not a very big ground, so getting over this outfield, which looks nice and hard and fast to me, won't be hard either. Let's have a look at our Dulux Weather Shield Weather Watch. There it is. 
17 degrees, the humidity on 55%, the players comfort on 20, and the wind that I was talking about emanating from, oh, it's around about the northwest there, and it's, I tell you, gusting up to about 25, so it's pretty windy out in the centre. The pitch condition, as I said, is pretty dry, and the light, well, I think that too will fluctuate depending on the cloud cover. Back to you, Richie Benner. Okay. Here it is. You can have the best football first. Okay, good luck. Good game, huh? Dave, uh, track looks pretty good. Uh, why are you sending him in? Well, I think really it's just a case of playing to whatever strength we do have, and mm. we haven't got a particularly strong bowling side, so our best chance is batting second, mm. chasing anything they can put out. Mm. I guess you'd like to turn the clock back to uh, 83, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was a long time ago, though, and yeah. uh, it's a completely different scene now. But it would be nice to uh, do it again. All right, good luck. Thank you. Alan, uh, you've gone for bowling strength rather than batting strength in this game? Well, we just, uh, you know, if we've got the slimmest chance of uh, getting in, uh, we need to improve our run rate, plus we need to bowl our opposition out cheaply. So, uh, you know, just throwing caution to the wind a bit today, and hopefully it proves the right mm. method. And, uh, you know, the, uh, the side, they're still hopeful, obviously, of getting in if you, can, uh, if you can win two games. Well, I suppose there's an outside chance, so you, you know, you go in with a little bit of hope, but basically we just want to finish off strongly and uh, just show everyone that we can actually play, and uh, you know, if we win the next two games. The World Cup makes its only appearance in Dunedin today, and the Carisbrook ground plays host to the unbeaten New Zealand team as they take on India. The pitch has been quite good here this season, although even by New Zealand standards... The pitch, Peter, it looks similar to the one we had for the New Zealand-England game, sh perhaps a shade damper. Now that was the strip though, the New Zealand-England game, where the world discovered Rod Latham as an international bowler. <laughs> they certainly did. And of course Harris and Larson and that pattern developed out of here, so it did good things for New Zealand and we'll sit, I, I'm sure we'll see the same things again. Well, let's just have a look on it. it the, the pitch here that we're using for this match is the one directly beside the strip that was really a bit disappointing for the England match against New Zealand. When in, both of them said with a bit of a joke, but it uh, wasn't too far away that the ball, when it landed, actually ran backwards. Yes, well, it was very slow and it was very dead and the ball just didn't have any carry. But this one's got a little more binding. It hasn't got that uh, drier look with the cracks. That one moved a little and you see there's very little uh, sign of cracks here. Good sole of grass, but it's dead. There's no greenness about it, just a slight tinge. So I think there'll be a little more carry on this one. Maybe it'll get slower as the day goes on. He's got a bit more moisture in it, John. We took out the plug that is where the stump vision camera gets located just at the bowler's end. And you can see there that if I dig my thumbnail into it, it actually comes through quite clearly. So there is some moisture there. The binding is there. The clay is good. And we know that this clay is very good for a good cricket strip because the tracks that we had last year here were really fantastic, weren't they? Yes. And it should be a fair contest for both parties, uh, whether you bat or bowl first. But I imagine because of the overhead conditions, the side winning the toss will have a bat because of these new rules we've got. They certainly will. I think that's very, very likely indeed. And the strip then should be a good, uh, if a little bit slow, and that might favour the New Zealand batting because the New Zealand batting has done so wonderfully well during the series and we're looking forward to seeing them do just that again today. <laughs> Mohamed Azruddin, you've won the toss here this morning. Uh, what are you going to do? Are we going to bat. You happy with the batting conditions, obviously? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it looks a bit dicey, the wicket. I don't know how it's going to play later on. But uh, I think it's always best to bat on a wicket when you don't know what's going to happen later on. What do you think of the weather conditions here? Is that uh, a bit cool? A bit cool, yeah. It's like playing in Derby. <laughs> playing in Derby. And who's in your team today? Who's not playing today? Uh, Ravi, Amre and Kamle not playing. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, Good luck. Thank you, thank you very luck. much. Martin Crows here. Martin, are uh, you happy with that? Uh, you'll be in the field first. Yeah, we, we were going to bat, actually, but uh, we'll get out here and experience the cold first. Yeah, it is a bit cool, isn't it? Yeah, and we're going to leave Wrighty and uh, Murphy Sewer and Danny Morrison uh, warming in the, in the changing room. Making the tea. OK, Martin, play well. Thanks, Thanks Thanks. And he's put this one in the air, and he could be out, and he is out. Held by Kevin Dewars. The summer safer it goes for 75. It's 128 for one in the 22nd over. Thoughts. Good catch. Taken by Trikos. That is the end of the Hanumar, out for 61. It's 144 for two in the 28th over. Gerda Sanger has run out, sent back by Aravinda. And that's a big breakthrough for Zimbabwe. The third wicket falls at 155 in the 30th. Gift down to mid-on. 
gratefully accepted. And Aravinda goes. And uh, Sri Lanka in real trouble now. Their best batsman is out for just 13. Jaya Saria goes. Good work by wicketkeeper Flower. And the change of bowling did the trick. The captain takes First the semi-final at Eden Park, featuring New Zealand and Pakistan. A patriotic crowd have been thrilled by Martin Crowe's side and spirits were lifted when he won the toss. This, the great southern stand here at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. Welcome, Welcome to World Cup Cricket Classics. Today we're bringing you the 1992 World Cup final between Pakistan and England from the MCG in Melbourne. Pakistan, led by their inspirational skipper Imran Khan, were appearing in a World Cup final for the first time, whereas England were taking part in their third.